The order for daily morning prayer is found on page 3 of the Book of Common Prayer. The hour cometh and now is, when the true worshipper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy grace like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant our most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou all things, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make peace to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Venite, or Psalm 95, is found on page 459 in the Book of Common Prayer. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us
prayer. The Lord, even the most mighty God, hath spoken, and called the world from the rising up of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion hath God appeared in perfect beauty. Our God shall come, and shall not keep silence. There shall go before him a consuming fire, and a mighty tempest shall be stirred up round about him. He shall call the heaven from above, and the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me with sacrifice. And the heaven shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I myself will testify against thee, O Israel, for I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee because of thy sacrifices. As for thy burnt offerings, they are always before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, and so are the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls upon the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are in my sight. If I be hungry, I will not tell thee, for the whole world is mine, and all that is therein. Thinkest thou that I will eat bull's flesh, and drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most Highest, and call upon me in the time of trouble. So will I hear thee, and thou shalt praise me. But unto the ungodly saith God, Why dost thou preach my laws, and takest my covenant in thy mouth? Whereas thou pleadest to be reformed, and hast cast my words behind thee. When thou sawest the thief, thou consentest unto him, and hast been partaker with the adulterers. Thou hast let thy mouth speak wickedness, and with thy tongue thou hast set forth deceit. Thou saddest and spakest against thy brother, yea, and hast slandered thy own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I held my tongue. And thou thoughtest wickedly, that I am even such a one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set before thee the things that thou hast done. O oh, consider this, ye that forget God, lest I pluck you away, and there be none to deliver you. Whoso offereth me thanks and praise, he honoreth me. And to him that ordereth his way aright, will I show the salvation of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Have mercy upon me, O God, after thy great goodness. According to the multitude of thy mercies, do away my offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and clear when thou shalt judge. Behold, I was shaken in wickedness, and in sin hath my mother conceived me. But lo, thou requirest truth in the inward parts, and shalt make me to understand wisdom secretly. Thou shalt purge me with kisseth, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Turn thy face from my sins, and put out all my misdeeds. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. O oh, give me the comfort of thy help again, and establish me with thy free spirit. Then shall I teach thy ways unto the wicked, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou that art the God of my help, and my tongue shall sing of thy righteousness. Thou shalt open my lips, O Lord, 
and thy mouth shall show thy praise. For thou desirest no sacrifice, else would I give it thee, but thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, shalt thou not despise. O be favorable and gracious and decide. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with the burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullets upon thine altar. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Why boastest thou thyself, thou tyrant, that thou canst do mischief? Whereas the goodness of God endureth yet daily. Thy tongue imagineth wickedness, and with lies thou comest like a sharp razor. Thou hast loved unrighteousness more than goodness, and falsehood more than righteousness. Thou hast loved to speak all words that may do hurt, O thou false tongue. Therefore shall God destroy thee forever. He shall take thee and pluck thee out of thy dwelling and root thee out of the land of the living. The righteous also shall see this and fear, and shall laugh at the scorn. Lo, this is the man that took not God for his strength, but trusted unto the multitude of his riches, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. As for me, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. My trust is in the tender mercy of God for ever and ever. I will always give thanks unto thee for that thou hast done, and I will hope in thy name for thy saints like it well. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here we the 37th chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. And King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned instead of Chromia, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king of the land of Judah. But neither he, nor his servants, nor the people of the land, did hearken unto the word of the Lord, which he spake by the prophet Jeremiah. And Zedekiah the king sent Jehuthal, the son of Shelemiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now unto the Lord our God for us. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into the prison. Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt, and when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem heard tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah, that sent you unto me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army which is come forth to help you shall return to Egypt into their own land. And the Chaldeans shall come again and fight against this city, and take it, and burn it with fire. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. For though ye have smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remain but wounded men among them, yet should they rise up every man in his tent, and burn this city with fire. And it came to pass, that when the army of the Chaldeans was broken up from Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, then Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin, to separate himself thence in the midst of the people. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the ward was there, whose name was Erijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he took Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Thou followest away the Chaldeans. Then said Jeremiah, It is false. I fall not away from the Chaldeans. But he hearkened not to him, 
So Erejai took Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. Wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah, and smote him, and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had that day in the prison. When Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon and into the towns, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah the king sent, and took him out, and the king asked him secretly in his house, and said, Is there any word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, There is. For said he, Thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto king Zedekiah, What have I offended against thee, or against thy servants, or against this people, that he hath put me in prison? Where are now your prophets which prophesy unto you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land? Therefore hear now, I pray thee, O my lord the king, let my supplication, I pray thee, be accepted before thee, that thou cause me not to return to the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah into the court of the prison, and that they should give him daily a piece of bread out of the baker's street, until all the bread of the city was spent. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. He read it for his lesson. The De Dea on page 10. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the clouds and in. Ha! 
that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the helpful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for thy holy church universal that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we command to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them, according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings, and a happy issue of all their afflictions. And this we beg of Jesus Christ. Say, Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time of one accord, to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill thou, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore.